Since about 2020, you could argue that Serie A was the most exciting and unpredictable of the top 5 leagues. Whilst the Premier League was dominated by Manchester City, the Bundesliga was firmly in the clutches of Bayern München and La Liga's big sides continued to do as they pleased, Italy has seen Juventus' dominance ended and subsequent title wins by Inter, AC Milan and Napoli, with the Scudetto being hotly contested each year. This season, you're all probably thinking that Inter have emerged as the new dominant force in Italian football, comfortably leading the league by 15 points and have turned to more interesting stories in Europe, with the Bundesliga finally being exciting after 10 years, a three-horse race in the Prem and Hirona's remarkable rise in La Liga. However, Inter's situation is a very unique one, in that they are probably the most successful bankrupt team in history. Remember that old story of the apple that was beautiful on the outside but rotten on the inside, well, in this video, I will try to explain how Internazionale Milano are an apple with a rotten core that plays beautiful football and somehow manages to remain competitive. Our story starts in 2010 in Madrid, where Inter have just defeated Bayern München through two Diego Milito goals to be crowned treble winners under Jose Mourinho. The man who led the first Italian team to ever win a treble would stay behind in Madrid, signing on with Real, ready to face Guardiola's tiki-taka. In his place came Rafa Benitez who was sacked mid-season and his replacement Leonardo couldn't achieve much more than a second place finish and the Coppa Italia win. At that time Inter had been owned by Massimo Moratti since 1995, who had made his fortunes in the oil industry taking over the Saras group started by his father, who at one point controlled 15% of Italy's total oil industry. Following nearly two decades in which he took Inter from perennial underachievers to one of the biggest teams in Italy, whilst reportedly spending 1.5 billion euros of his own fortune, mostly on superstars like Ronaldo, Luis Figo or Roberto Baggio, the Italian businessman made the decision to look to outside investment, as world football entered its current hyper-consumerist stage, and the money involved in football reached new levels of insanity. In 2012, Kenneth Huang, a Chinese businessman looked to buy a minority interest in the club, with the China Railway Construction Corporation Limited, one of the biggest construction companies in the world at the time, looking to partner up with Inter on a new stadium. The deal however collapsed and Huang had previously been involved in a similar attempt to buy Liverpool in 2010, erroneously claiming that a part of China's sovereign wealth fund was his partner. When an investigation looked into this claim, it found that said sovereign fund had no knowledge of him and Huang himself had made further false claims regarding him being on the board of directors of a Chinese bank and regarding various degrees he had not obtained studying in the US. Just one year later, a new investor was found, this time one who would take over a majority stake in the club, 70% to be precise, namely Eric Tohir. The Indonesian businessman and politician, alongside several partners, who has built his wealth through the Mahaka Group, a sports-focused media group, has owned several sports teams throughout his life, most notably DC United and the Philadelphia 76ers, and is currently the co-owner of League One club Oxford United. His time in Italy was, let's just say, less than fortunate, with Inter finishing 9th, 5th and 8th during his time in charge, whilst breaching financial fair play regulations in 2015. Salvation for Tohir was soon on the horizon as everybody's favorite teddy bear Xi Jinping sent his billionaire minions out into the world and told them to buy as many football clubs as possible and return home with as many superstars looking for a paid vacation as possible. It was around this time in 2016 that Inter's current owner Steven Zhang came into the picture. His dad Zhang Jingdong was one of the founders of Suning, one of China's biggest old school and e-commerce retailers and its offspring, Suning Real Estate and the Suning Appliance Group. His son was reported as one of the driving forces behind the buyout, which not only acquired Tohir's share, but also all the remaining shares of the Moratti family. Over the next four seasons, the Chinese ownership presided over three fourth place finishes and one seventh place finish, whilst finishing nearly every season in the red financially in terms of transfers. During this time, Every savvy hit like Milan Skriniar, Alessandro Bastoni or Lautaro Martinez was counterbalanced by average signings for inflated fees like João Mario, Gabriel Barbosa, Stefan Jovetic or Valentino Lazaro. Of those, João Mario and Lazaro are the two most grievous ones, costing more than 60 million euros combined and leaving the club for 3 and 4 million euros respectively. If this were any other team, in any other league, in any other time period, these losses would have been papered over and probably meant some belts needed to be tightened for a while 
in the upcoming transfer seasons. However, Inter were at the time in the eye of a perfect storm that would eventually lead them to the financial situation they find themselves in today, in around 400 million euros of debt. All throughout the 2010s, the increase in revenue present in other top European leagues was not felt in Italy, as levels had been almost on a plateau since the early 2000s, increasing by only small amounts each season. At the same time, the Premier League experienced a sharp uptick in its revenue, whilst Bundesliga and La Liga comfortably overtook Serie A by the end of the 2010s. However, in terms of wages, the three leagues remained somewhat level. As Italian football was beginning to see more money come in around 2018 and Steven Jang became the president of Inter and the youngest ever chairman of the club at just 27 years old, the fortunes of the club seemed to be on the up under Luciano Spalletti. In 2019, Antonio Conte joined the club with Spalletti receiving a 25 million euro payoff and missed out on the Scudetto to Juventus by just one point. That same season, big money signings Romelu Lukaku and Christian Eriksen arrived amongst others taking the total expenditure of the club to nearly 200 million euros and ensuring that they were ready for the title fight to come. Said title fight experienced a major interruption that year as the coronavirus pandemic hit Europe, with Italy being especially badly affected. The next season, the spending continued with the marquee signing of Ashraf Hakimi for 43 million euros and Conte guided the team to a first Serie A title in 10 years. He would subsequently leave at the end of that season, stating that he did not consider he could take the team any further, probably sensing the impending financial woes. In his stead came one of the most underrated managers in world football at the moment, Simone Inzaghi. Just as people started to realize the immense gaping chasm Inter found themselves in financially, in his first season in charge, he lost out on the title to bitter rivals AC Milan, but managed to win the Coppa Italia and that very same season was the first time since 2016 Inter made a profit in the transfer market. And what a profit it was, amidst cheap signings like Denzel Dumfries who only cost 14 million euros, something I still think about when I can't sleep at night, and the huge departures of Romelu Lukaku and Ashraf Hakimi, the club raised more than 150 million euros. At the same time, Inter's debt stood at around 600 million euros. That would be small peanuts in the world of football, especially for a club owned by one of the biggest conglomerates in China. But the Covid pandemic ensured that the conglomerate was on the edge of a cliff. Amidst legal battles with the Chinese division of Carrefour, yearly losses in the billions of dollars, multiple bailouts by the Chinese state and the bankruptcy of Suning's Chinese Super League club Jiangsu in 2021, Suning's European holding company Grand Tower, based in Luxembourg, took out a 275 million euro loan from Oak Tree Capital Management in order to keep themselves liquid. This loan has an end date on the 20th of May 2024 and could see the club fall into the hands of the American Asset Management Fund, as reported by James Horncastle of The Athletic. Meanwhile, Zhang's empire was facing a court case by the China Construction Bank over 200 million in unpaid debt, however Zhang Jr. maintained that the club was not for sale amidst Xi Jinping losing interest in football and many Chinese owners closing up shop as the Chinese Super League was effectively gutted of European talent and money. Besides Chinese owners, Inter were on the forefront of another trend in the recent years. Partnering up with Digital Bits, which sounds like a service where you see other people's bits on the internet, and God knows we have enough of those, as football became more and more interested in the crypto market. This saw their main shirt sponsor, Digital Bits, default on around 30 million euros and being replaced by Paramount Plus, another cautionary tale regarding the joke that is the crypto market. Last season, Inter shifted a lot of its deadwood taking a hit with free transfers just to get some wages off the books. The Scudetto would elude them again as Napoli surprised everyone, but they retained the Coppa Italia and narrowly missed out on the Champions League to Manchester City. Another boon for the fans was them winning the last five derbies against AC Milan. Reaching the Champions League final was no doubt huge in terms of revenue, coupled with the sale of Onana to Manchester United last summer for 50 million, Onana's departure alongside those of Marcelo Brozovic to Al-Hilal, Edin Dzeko to Fenerbahce and Milan Skriniar to PSG were made easier by the club being extremely intelligent in the market signing Marcos Thuram on a free and Benjamin Pavard and Jan Zomer from Bayern for less than 40 million euros combined. Their impact has been immediate, as Inzaghi has proven once again that he can replace any player and continually make the squad better. At the time of writing, Inter haven't lost a game in the Serie A since September 
and have just been narrowly eliminated by Atletico Madrid in the Champions League. Even though Steven Jang maintains that the club is not for sale, the Rain Group, who handled Todd Bowley's takeover of Chelsea, are reportedly guiding Inter through a potential sale process. The benchmark for the price has been set by their crosstown rivals AC Milan, who were acquired by Redbird Capital in 2022 for 1.2 billion. However, a potential sale is complicated by several reasons. Chief amongst those is the debt, which still stands at around 400 million euros, and the future plans for the San Siro. Initially, the two Milan rivals unveiled plans for a new venue called La Catedrale in 2019. But of course, a huge project like that could not go ahead whilst Inter were looking down the back of every couch in their club offices trying to find extra funds. The stadium situation is further complicated by Italian authorities not being exactly enthusiastic at the prospect of Serie A teams building new stadiums. Most of Serie A's stadiums are owned by the municipalities the teams are based in, municipalities which are very reluctant to see the clubs move to new venues, which would leave them without part of the revenues and saddled with giant white elephants with no purpose. In September of last year, AC Milan abandoned their black and blue cousins and announced they are building their own stadium in San Donato Milanese, which is a suburb in the south of Milan. As for the San Siro, luckily for the fans who appreciate its beauty and history, it is going nowhere at least until 2026, when it will host events at the 2026 Winter Olympics and Paralympics. With the recent success of the team, the Zhang family is probably looking for a big payout to offset their major losses in other areas over the past few years, having bought Inter for just 200 million euros and sunk a further 900 million in the years of their ownership. And still, somehow, during all of this upheaval and turmoil, Inter have consistently looked like the best and healthiest team in Italy. A big part of that is Simone Inzaghi, working wonders with a squad that was in a constant process of renewal, managing to bed in new signings seemingly instantly, and making fans easily forget the big money departures. An even bigger part is, in my opinion at least, the financial situation itself, and I know that saying that a club can massively improve their fortunes by nearly bankrupting themselves is verging on insane, but that's exactly what Inter did. Before their financial woes, managers were appointed and fired constantly with big payouts in the pursuit of an imaginary level of performance the inflated fees paid for mediocre players demanded. Since 2021, Inter have been forced to change their approach drastically putting their complete faith in a manager that produces results without demanding superstar signings every summer and finally ceasing to splash the cash on overpriced flops. A big part of their improved transfer strategy has been Beppe Marotta, appointed as CEO in 2018, who had previously presided over a near decade of dominance at Juventus during the 2010s. His approach of cheap signings, of which Pogba's Juventus signing and subsequent record-breaking sale is most impressive, has continued at Inter with the likes of Marcos Turam and Andre Onana. If any new owners are to come in, Morata and Inzaghi, alongside the renovation of the San Siro, which would be much cheaper than a completely new stadium, are, like their shirt says, paramount to Inter replicating the success of Juventus during the 2010s. And with that, we've come to the end of the video. If you stayed until the end, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think about Inter's financial situation and hopefully I will see you next time.